This is Anthony with MakeWeirdMusic.com, and today I am in Seattle, Washington with Alex Anthony Feda. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, guys. Awesome. So, uh, Alex, I found out about you on YouTube right. looking for people who could play Fracture, right. and you had the only video, and it still probably is the only video on the internet, of someone successfully playing Fracture. So I thought it'd be cool if we could just talk about uh, that because I have a series about my failures in playing Fracture. Uh -huh. So I'd love to hear about some of the challenges you went through in trying to learn the piece, uh, mental, physical, musical. Hmm. So go for it. So yeah, great to be here, Anthony. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yes, uh, it's a long story, in fact. Um, Learning the notes mm -hmm. first. Learning the notes took me about two weeks. Um, I got involved in guitar craft in '95, mm -hmm. um, and I prior to that I never heard that piece. Prior to '95. Pri prior to guitar craft, I had no clue what. Wow. I might also add, I had no clue what King Crimson and stuff was. I, I mean, it certainly rang a bell, but I wasn't into that, or mm -hmm. prod rock, or I had no idea. I, I liked uh, more like shoegaze uh, stuff, mm -hmm. or heavy metal, or whatever it, it kicks ass. So, uh, and also old guitar music, like Django Reinhardt, uh, or old American music, you know, like Duane Eddy, mm -hmm. through my f parents. They liked like cowboy kind of music. So I got like that influence. Like Williams and Chad no, no, Not that obscure. Okay. And uh, that came later on mm. f uh, from my own research, let's say. But they would like Elvis a lot. Oh, okay. Um, okay. You know, Bill Haley. Mm -hmm. um, some blues mm -hmm. or jazz uh, so I came in contact with American roots music very early mm -hmm. as well as with tango and stuff well uh, later on I liked many bands I liked Led Zeppelin of course who not right. uh, Beatles uh, Stones a lot ACDC that kind of stuff you know like mainstream rock and roll ah. from the 70s right um, okay but up until 90 something, uh, I had no clue what Rob, who Robert was, or Guitar Craft, or King Crimson, or whatever. Uh, a friend of mine back then uh, invited me to a concert that will, will be happening in Buenos Aires. I think it was 93 or 4. And it was the quintet, mm. the string, Fripp string quintet, with California Trio and, and Trey Gunn, and Robert himself, of course, uh, and that blew my mind. I was like, what the f is this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what kind of music is this? Uh, wow, it just blew me away from the first tones coming, from, coming out from the you know, the instruments and the boxes and the, and the theater was packed mm. and I, it was a revelation, certainly, this, this shimmering sound. I, at the moment I was into Cocteau Twins and Dream Pop and ambient rock, you know, uh, slow dive. This must have been like 90, 90, 89, 89, 90, somewhere there. I liked a lot of after punk stuff at the moment, like this model coil, 4AD, average bands. Uh, well, so I found some some uh, uh, mesmerizing effect uh, from the acoustic guitars these guys played. Mm -hmm. like this all this harpsichord kind of like sound, and then Fripp will do his uh, 
uh, soundscaping with, with Trey and all this dreamy, mm -hmm. ambient -y, but at the same time also shimmering guitar music, uh, arpeggios, and, yeah, and that got me like, wow, this, this is very moving. I feel something. So at the end of that concert, uh, there were some people with uh, like um, with flyers about guitar craft course happening next year. So I took one and then I read it and it, it seemed okay. And, uh, and uh, well, that's that got me in somehow. So I applied for the course and I went into the course, but not really having an idea of of all of the. King Crimson stuff and the repertoire and the records and the different ages or incarnation incarnations yeah. have no clue whatsoever about it. No idea. So first level one, of course, change of uh, of tuning, which wasn't really a problem for me because I actually I've been always out of tune. So. <laughs> Changing it a bit, it, it wasn't that bad. So very soon I thought, oh, this is much better. Uh -huh. I can play things and they sound kind of okay. And and the old tuning, I I played already, and it was fine for me to switch. It was not a problem. I mean, for my way of playing, I always try to play like and sound and not sound like a guitar per se. Yeah. Back in that day, right? Lots of uh, distortion, fuzz, and also uh, playing with dropping some strings. Oh, okay, so the, the new tuning wasn't that much of a surprise. I mean, I felt immediately at home with it. I have no clue. I have no idea that it, that we will be doing hmm. a different tuning back in the day. I think some were said about it, but I I didn't pay attention but at the time. And then I took a lesson with 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 one of the instructors there prior to the course and he said oh but you should tune differently and I say why because uh, it's in fifth uh, oh, okay well let's do that see what happens uh, at first yeah weird but after 10 minutes it was like okay it sounds nice mm -hmm. I like it mm -hmm. first course uh, and all this bunch of people, like real King Crimson heads, you know, like everyone knows everything about, uh, yeah. Who was the, in the band and everyone and, and the genealogy of right. this and then we'll mix it. I had, I, I must, I must admit, I, I didn't have a, a clear idea of what Prague is, rock is or what kind of rock uh, came came to be in the day in, Brit in Great Britain, you know, like mm -hmm. all this progressive rock. I knew about Yes and Pink Floyd and stuff, but no, King Crimson was really obscure for me. I didn't, I didn't have really a uh, clue about it. So in that context, you know, I began to become familiar with, with some material and uh, and I found a few, a few things that I really, pff, uh, it, it, blew my head off. Uh, one of those was Fracture, of course. And another one was uh, Lark's Tongues in Aspect Part 1. Uh, and the other one, I think it must have been Red. Hmm. And this, all instrumentals, right? I mean, the singing, and it's, it's fine, and I like it a lot, but the instrumentals are like strikingly uh, intense. I, so, Fracture, I I came across mm, probably probably dur during that year after my first course in Argentina. I said, "Oh, this is cool!" And and, and I, I I I saw some people will play would play some similar um, um, patterns or exercises, right. or I didn't know what. What to call them? You know, maybe maybe it was it's, it's a guitar craft piece. Maybe mm -hmm. it's just an exercise. Who knows? Uh, but I was like asking. Uh, then it, it it yeah. So it some, somehow happened that I, I began to learn and pick up the pieces because some other older students knew this and, 
and they will play it but of course the new tuning so right. it's a bit different and the arpeggio part it's extremely difficult to play on the on the fifth um, because it's uh, super stretchy mm -hmm. you know the arpeggios yeah. so it sound so they sound similar um, uh, so I began to the like, picking up the pieces right and learning the notes from people like orally mm -hmm. uh, like, like no there was no no score at the moment and uh, yeah so that, it, it, it's it, it happened like gradually mm -hmm. and uh, then <clears throat> yeah learning learning the piece was a uh, it was not that long to it's not a long time to to learn the notes and the parts and see the form of the right. of i mean i mean it's a it's an excerpt right it's not the whole piece the whole piece is like 13 minutes long <laughs> and it has an impro uh, inside and it's a, the only the only part we always i always like uh, enjoyed playing is like the intro a little bit mm -hmm. and then this uh, so-called modo perpetual right um uh, so yeah but being able to play that from a to to, to z or from from beginning to end that part that was well being able to de develop a way of playing that with a degree of the relax that took long and it's still, I mean, it's still a long way to go. It, I think it will never end. Mm -hmm. you, that you discover, oh, okay, I might twist my right hand just zero comma zero zero <laughs> zero nanometer, and then it sounds different. Yeah. Or I can do that up stroke. I don't know. Well, <clears throat> that being said, practicing. Uh, um, there is the seven primaries of guitar craft. Are you familiar with them? I I know a couple of them, okay. but I've never seen them written out. Or yeah, well, one of the first seven primaries implies emotion, uh, a motion, a sequence where certain notes will be held, while others not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has a particular name. We don't want to discuss now. Now that, uh, but it is the principle mm -hmm. behind. Fracture and the little, 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 little. So that appears in the in the system of guitar craft in guitar craft lore uh, as one of the first seven primaries. I think it's the sixth. I'm not sure now. Probably, probably the sixth primary where notes are being held down and kept ringing while the others. Playing on the adjacent string uh -huh. on a different figure. So the, bam, 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 the, bam, melod bam, the melody comes bam. out. Yeah, but the other ones are going. They, they go. Yeah, they okay. go like constantly releasing and. Uh, right. Yeah. So uh, that that takes long to to acquire a, a flexibility inside of your hand, the right, left hand, that allows you to articulate with that it's super extremely difficult mm -hmm. and many tiny movements right and you know like and 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 it it should also it should have this quality of like a forkless effort right. or it is like it's, it's if you look at it it's as if there is no movement right. almost mm -hmm. just a little bit more than no motion at all mm -hmm. yeah just that this bit so then you begin to learn how to play. But up to then, it's only wor work, labor, right. labor, labor, like 10,000 hours, I don't know, <laughs> maybe more. So, and, and, and but this is still no music, right? right? This is only notes. Just notes. And how to play them on the fretboard. Then it's the right hand operation which is particularly difficult. This is inside picking. Mm -hmm. Inside picking, I mean... Uh, you go up and then you have to cross yes, that string without hitting it again. You're using the space between the right. strings yeah. rather than the strings themselves. Right. So this is, this is something very fine, very refined, very... <clears throat> Hello. 
very uh, how would you say very highly developed yeah. and uh, I never had uh, before in my life uh, a guitar teacher that is so precise and clear about the right hand operation and how we may hold our picks. I been to many um, guitar teachers in my life, but no one could explain exactly as exactly as uh, as Robert did uh, what might be an efficient way of holding a pick. Mm -hmm. uh, no one claims this is the perf the, the most, you know, uh, but it allows you to remain relaxed while. Uh, uh, discharging incredible, incredible acrobacies mm -hmm. across the, the strings, also cross picking yeah. and yeah. up and down, and the, the alternate system, right? Alternate picking system and few sub genres mm -hmm. inside of it. Um, fine, so I do all this, I learn the piece. I also, I must also say the practiced a lot and then abandon it for a lot of, for quite a bit of time mm -hmm. then I, come, I get back to it and then I, I just abandon it and um, and worked on some other aspects then I, I always revisited in the years and then uh, yeah some there was a point where I was able to play from from the beginning to the end of this model perpetual mm -hmm. Uh, with a degree of comfort and not <laughs> fainting at it or yeah. or uh, yeah and and still being able to keep up to keep the tempo which which originally is a lively tempo is quite it's quite something mm -hmm. 100 recommended speed where the piece begins to live uh, live up uh, uh, or lift up uh, it's around 120 and 26, mm -hmm. um, which is, it seems to be a th threshold for all players who begin working with this type of yeah. orthodox picking technique, which I find to be very, not useful, useful is not a word, but unique, mm. unique, it's a unique approach to picking. Uh, I, for me, it was complete a complete revelation, and it it also it helped me to develop uh, a sense of rhythm that was otherwise not available. Yeah. So uh, it's like an old school made new. Yeah. You know, so it's it's super old school. I mean, I think I think in the thirties, the twenties and thirties, like dance band guitar players who were. They would just be rhythm players. Uh, they kind of developed a lot of these, maybe in a rougher manner, um, but how to strum effectively without falling apart after three hours of const constant right. motion right. because people wanted to dance. There was no CDs, no MP3s, no MP8s. <laughs> you know, so band had to play right. long. Right. So. I think it's coming, you know, so like evolving and coming from a place that uh, this that that place is praxis and life in a life situation, mm -hmm. you know. So then, <clears throat> then I went uh, off line with the school. I, I did my own. I moved to Germany and and began playing some other kind of uh, dialects. In Robertism language, <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, um, yeah, and I began. You know, I sort of needed uh, a grounding in terms of guitar playing, in terms of guitar tone and sound, and that was my quest for the purest electric guitar sound I could find mm. in history. In recording history. So I went back and back and back and back and for I mean back in time, back in time. So I began to listen again to the twangy guys, you know, Duan Eddy, 
um, Chad Atkins, Merle Travis, um, all these people who could really play well with a clean tone. Uh, and not only jazz players, but yeah, a lot of country picking. And Jimmy Bryant, you know, brilliant, mm -hmm. brilliant stuff. Uh, but also Link Ray, for instance, shockingly powerful with very little elements. Right? Mm -hmm. He was not technical at all. Mm -hmm. I think he he just gave gave a damn a damn about it. Uh, and and some others and many others that I will certainly forget now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it began like, collecting all this information of playing purely again with all the the old tuning, coming back to the old tuning with all the guitarcraft background. So I say, no, no, it might be interesting to revamp fracture, but in or its original tuning. Uh, and positionings, positionings, and the right transitions. So that gave me again a whole overview that, that was amazing. That was amazing. I had to relearn the the the, the piece uh, from scratch uh, on the old tuning. Mm -hmm. So that, it was nice to do. It was a nice thing to do. And then still, I'm I'm. Still Still having the idea of having a double neck guitar with NST and OST and mm -hmm. switch between right. them and see what happens. So in, in, I, as I was revamping Fracture on all tuning again after Guitarcraft, I had my my NST here and the OST, so, so I would do this. <laughs> and from that I got the idea that I need a double neck. I still couldn't find some someone who, would, who can make, make one for me. Mm. And not a monster, not right. like a Gibson, right. but something yeah. like a small taily kind of with mm -hmm. two necks. Just it doesn't it doesn't have to look fancy. It, it just need to function properly so I can switch mm -hmm. between two. So, um, and that was super nice. And I don't know why I came across a, an, an old an old guitar player issue. I think from the from eighty six or. All, or even older, um, where there was a transcription of fracture, you know, mm -hmm. like, like all the notes. And so, oh, okay. I think at 83, it, it, it was the time when Robert was co collaborating with Guitarcraft. It mm -hmm. was a short period of time where he will also present some proto Guitarcraft concepts. Right. Um, um, and then, ah, uh, oh, these are the notes, cool, yeah. So I began doing it properly and found, oh, it's cool, 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 cool. So that also, that took not too long to learn the notes, mm -hmm. but to articulate inside of that. That took, that still takes, I mean, it, it took 15 years maybe mm -hmm. to, to build up the, the muscles to, you know, and not, maybe, I think, Maybe if you just practice fracture, it might not be the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You might need to practice Hey Joe rather <laughs> and feel good, you right. know, at it. Feel good at it. Um, it's all about the feeling. If you don't feel it, it's, it's worthless to play it. Right. You have to feel it. And this happened to me, weirdly enough, with fracture, which is a piece that sounds like Stravinsky on acid, mm -hmm. right? So, yeah, and uh, I don't know what. Can, wh well, one what thing can, um, hmm? in my efforts in learning it, yeah, I remember Robert saying, "Your relationship with the pick changes your relationship with the instrument, or something like that." Yeah, it'll change your approach. And I found at first I thought. Okay, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know, one of these deep sounding quotes. Yeah. But now that I'm a couple of years into this study post guitar uh, circle or mm. guitar craft technique, mm. it's really changed. I feel like it's changed my life. Yeah. Like <laughs> the way I think about using my hand, yeah. the way I hold the pick, 
the uh, even you know just recently I'm realizing Paramount. Paramount. the Paramount. way I type yeah. influences the way I hold the pick. Paramount. Yeah. It's paramount. The the right, you know, the, the thumb and these guys, mm-hmm. the, it all has an influence on the tone you produce. Mm-hmm. If the tone you, you produce is nice, then whatever you play is going to sound nice. Right. Because you are doing properly. Why does it sound so cool? Because you are playing good. Mm-hmm. Why are you playing good? Because you are sounding good. So mm-hmm. you are listening, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. He said to me, um, until you can do this, mm-hmm. you can't play Fracture. And I thought, okay, you know, what what could possibly be so important about moving a straight thumb from capital, this joint? Capital, capital importance. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. So can mm-hmm. you talk about, like, did you have to go through uh, physical change? Yeah, well, when, uh, when I went, oops, when I went to the first course, I, I would hold the pick like, most of guitar players like this mm-hmm. and, and do <laughs> right, right. as if I will be whipping cream or right. something, like flapping around. Right, you know? yeah. So loose floppy fingers. Yeah, and, like yeah. like this. Yeah. Maybe or tight. Did you uh, have a tight variation? Uh huh. Uh huh. There you go. Cool. Yeah. So trying to play fracture with this was no. I I didn't even know what fracture is. Right. Maybe my bones will fracture or something. <laughs> <laughs> but then I think it was in a personal meeting with him back in the day he will kneel before you and take his take a few minutes of accommodation of your arm wrist and then every every joint and and once he found a middle road of relaxation, he will do this mm-hmm. and not allow you to go just loose, loosen up, only then to place the pick here so it doesn't fall down. Mm-hmm. So there is a perfect balance. Perfect. Because every Every hand, every, is different. every hand is different. Every mm-hmm. body, every body has a different feel. So he will very gently and generously do this mm-hmm. and bring your hand to the guitar. So he did that, and he said something like, "You, oh, you really lost it." <laughs> so. so um, and that, and that, that kept on, on like popping up, you know, that, what, what, did, right. what was the meaning of that? What yeah. did I lost? What was lost? Yeah. What exactly meant? So I began, like I went back home and I began noticing that there are joints that we never use. I don't know why, maybe it's not important to know why, but we don't use them as requested by this technique. But they, w- once you begin noticing the points mm-hmm. inside, this is something not... Awareness. Like a, yeah, you this is something awareness. you need to also feel uh-huh. yeah, or be aware of or both. Uh, the, then... I began noticing a change on the tone. Mm-hmm. I, I was being producing only with the right hand. Yeah. Not to speak about the left, which, which is also another, you know, body of. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so, because the angle at which the pick hits the string and then goes back defines the world. It makes a huge difference, mm-hmm. a tiny, huge difference. Mm-hmm. So every little correction I was able to bring inside, it made a big change in the sound. So it began to sound rounder mm-hmm. or fuller mm-hmm. or at will, yeah. or thinner or smaller. 
or big, you know, and then, uh, and then I understood yeah. a little bit. And I say, okay, I know now this is t stiff, this is not, not flexible enough, this is, this is too tight, this is, this is too much pressure, mm -hmm. this is collapsing, this is horrible. Yeah. This makes a horrible sound, <laughs> also an electric guitar, yeah. surprisingly. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, and this takes, I, I mean, I practice this even today, right? Mm -hmm. Every day, I, I don't think I will be able to ever, you know, achieve a perfect right hand. Right. Because I like finger style, I mm -hmm. like to make mm -hmm. another, some other things with the guitar. But for this particular um, approach, I, I prefer to, to have a sound that is... Um, cultivated. Mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of what I play, I I, um, I have a high standard on on how I play it. I found um, that um, it took me probably a year and a half to figure this out. When I was practicing, the pick would the point of the pick would start moving forward. Yeah, yeah pointing like. Right, yeah. <laughs> and I found it was just because on my upstrokes, ah. the pick wasn't flat, so I was pulling the pick forward. Yeah, and when you're playing, you know, how many notes per minute? Mm -hmm. <laughs> every tiny fraction of a millimeter adds up to enough millimeters, so yeah. the pick is no longer. Well, this is a precision tool. Yeah, this is a precision tool. Right. It's like mm, I don't know. As if you will have a very sharp um, saw, you know, mm -hmm. or, or it's a precision, it's a precision tool, yeah. not unlike the regular goat, the rounded, the rounded like, yeah. which is more like a hammer, uh -huh. but this is rather a bisturi, you know what bisturi is? Mm -hmm. It's like for a surgeon. Oh, okay. Like yeah. a, a scalpel. Scalpel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not bistury. Bistury is in Spanish. Scalpel. So you do exactly what you need to right. not... Uh, right. You know? So, good thing is no one will die if, if, <laughs> uh, if you use this wrong. No one except the song <laughs> and your reputation. Oh, maybe your audience. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah that, yeah that's that's cool I, I I observed your your approach to picking has changed radically yeah in the last few years mm -hmm. uh, uh, I I must also admit I'm not a, an internet nerd that I look everything <laughs> and all and that I right. I'm apologies for that you don't I I, I rather go and play guitar right yeah or or something mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't like to spend too much time on the internet. It mm -hmm. makes me drives me crazy. Right. Uh, uh, but still, I think it is a powerful tool too mm -hmm. to connect with others, to right. share, to exchange. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. it's a super powerful weapon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, any other things that just like a maybe one particular frustration yeah. with the pick a story you can tell um not frustration uh, but it was very interesting as i uh i become more, more and more familiar with the whole um, bag of information <laughs> you know which is inside of this uh, piece to practice with reversed picking. Oh, start with an upstroke. Yeah. Okay. To practice it with reverse picking was crucial. Mm. Crucial. Wow. Because um, it schools you again about something that you thought you already had. You know, we guitar players have a particular talent to keep things for granted, mm. especially guitar players, maybe some other instrumentalists too, I don't know, but we guitar players, we have a tendency to give things for granted mm -hmm. all the time. So this gives you an opportunity to, 
to measure how much uh, you know you uh, assumed you were able to what you were not and, and that's not a frustration though mm. that's something that I find uh, exciting always um, I don't get frustrated with 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 guitar guitar is always loving you know she she's fine we are not so <laughs> uh, so uh, um, be, be, beginning to practice this with the reverse picking gave me yet another um, boost in terms of knowing and experiencing the space between strings mm -hmm. rather than the strings themselves right and I had a a feeling that well finally that's where music comes from from the space between the strings mm. maybe you know yeah. because something happens there you play the string you pluck the string you hit the string but what is with the space in between <laughs> Twilight Zone or what <laughs> so this gives you always you know like the opportunity to to visit yeah. all these mm, unknown regions of string spacing mm -hmm. so you have all these beautiful strings and the five spaces or the seven spaces mm -hmm. if you count these two mm. you know so I, I, and, and I came to that conclusion you know while practicing reversed picking interesting yeah so and it sounds super differently mm -hmm. right, right. right. So the accents and everything is but when you go back to straight normal flat picking or alternate picking something remains something remains and I think it's the quest for lightness mm -hmm. light not heavy right this is a piece that you cannot play um, in a sack wild manner mm -hmm. it won't work yeah. maybe he can play it I don't know maybe he can play it but uh, for sure he's great right. I love him he's amazing <laughs> yeah but uh, but he's always like right you know fantastic uh -huh. I mean he plays amazing stuff uh, but I I cannot play like that and keep uh, and keep a whole keep a whole show right. doing that wow man I'm I'm, I'm mortal he, he might be a Viking or something I don't know <laughs> but but it, it fracture is clean you know yeah first right. then you can hit a big mouth or something but uh, on the first run it is it is much better that you do it clean or yeah. with acoustic guitar with acoustic guitar is extremely hard yeah. because the action and because of the general construction the strings are thicker heavier mm -hmm. yeah with electric guitar well yeah. it's a bit more comfortable uh, so to play it with an acoustic guitar and with this tuning, it's, a, it's a cl close to pain in the ass. Close, but but it is it is possible. Mm -hmm. It is possible. Yeah, and it sounds okay. It sounds okay. I like it. Thank you so much for yeah. taking the time to talk about. You're totally this. welcome. I really appreciate it. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah, sure, man. All right. You two want to talk gauchos?